Today on Path of Grace. You know, my grandma, she passed away just a couple of years ago. And I think about all the changes she saw in her lifetime. She was close to 100 years old when she died. In her lifetime, she literally saw the world change. Let me give you just a few of the things that she saw in her lifetime. She saw the development of indoor plumbing with hot and cold running water. She saw the invention of the radio and people being able to buy them and have them in their homes, and it blew their mind. She saw the introduction of the telephone in people's homes, mass production of automobiles, the invention of the TV, movies, stereo phonograph records, eight-track tapes, cassettes, video cassettes, CDs, DVDs, MP3, surround sound, nuclear energy, nuclear bombs, fluorescent light bulbs, vitamins, disposable diapers. Underarm deodorant, aerosols, roll-ons, plastic wrap, refrigerators, freezers, contact lenses, automatic weapons. She saw the advent of the airline industry, the development of the interstate highway system, computers, contact lenses, (laughs) Pong, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Atari, Nintendo, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox, and Xbox 360. Chemical weapons, biological weapons. Video cameras, microwaves, satellites, satellite TV, CBs, cellular phones, GPS, rockets, space shuttles, space stations, and the list could go on and on and on. That was all in her lifetime, the lifetime of one individual. Think about it. From the beginning all the way up until 100 years ago, things didn't change a whole lot. But in the last 100 years, people have literally begun to travel to and fro, and knowledge, technology has radically increased. It has multiplied exponentially. And really, I believe that the increase of technology is super significant when it comes to understanding Bible prophecy. Over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, we are going to wrap up our study of the book of Daniel. But I got to let you know, We are going to come back in the near future and look at a couple of topics that we find in this last chapter, Daniel chapter 12. For instance, the topic of resurrection and the phrase age during. In verse 2 of chapter 12, we're told that the multitudes of those sleeping in the dust of the ground are going to awaken some to life age during and some to reproaches age during. What does that mean? Well, we're not going to talk about it today. That's for another study. We're going to look at those who are asleep being raised up. We're going to look at that phrase age during, which is what we find in Young's literal translation, which is very different than the wording in a lot of non-literal translations. You can check them out for yourself. But in a future study, we'll be talking about life age during, what that is all about. We'll be looking at the topic of death. What is death? Well, We'll find out. We're going to be looking at the topic of life. We're going to be looking at resurrection and asking the question, will there be more than one resurrection? I'll give you a clue. Yes, there is. And we're going to put a lot of time into it. But today we're going to just make our way through the rest of Daniel chapter 12 and wrap up our study of this book. So let's jump on into it in verse four. And thou, O Daniel, Hide the things and seal the book till the time of the end. Many do go to and fro, and knowledge is multiplied. People like to wonder, what's going to be going on at the time of the end? At the end of this age, what what signs are there going to be? Well, here we find something interesting. Daniel is told by this messenger from God to hide the things, to seal the book till the time of the end. When... Many will be going to and fro, and knowledge is going to be multiplied. Hmm. That's some interesting terminology, isn't it? Seal the book till the time of the end. Now, people have been reading the book of Daniel since it was written, but I wonder how much of it has made no sense for most of those reading it. And I wonder how much of it has begun to make more sense as time has passed. Think about it. All of the prophecy this book contains, a lot of it, honestly, for you and me, reading it wouldn't have made much sense to us if we had read it before the fulfillment of those prophecies that have already been fulfilled. But for you and I, in hindsight, we can look at history and then look at the book of Daniel and say, you know, that lined up perfectly. So that tells us that as time has passed, as things were fulfilled, 
portions of this book would become unsealed. In other words, you could look at it and it would make more sense. And this messenger of God tells Daniel, seal it up till the time of the end when many will go to and fro and knowledge will be multiplied. He's giving us a couple of signs of what will be going on toward the end, the end of this age. People going to and fro and knowledge being multiplied. Think about that terminology, knowledge multiplied. From the beginning of time until basically a little over 100 years ago, think about traveling around the earth. It was fairly limited. The most common mode of transportation was what was attached to your legs just below the ankles. You were going to travel on foot. Some people had horses or donkeys or camels that they could use to travel with. Some were able to travel on a big sailboat. And after months and months at sea, they could cover fairly large distances. But think about how things have changed in the last hundred years or so. A hundred years ago, the fastest a person could travel was probably around the speed of a horse. And I'm not exactly sure what that is. Maybe 35 miles per hour. I don't think the fastest racehorses go beyond 45 or 50 miles per hour. But now... You can wake up in the morning, have breakfast wherever you happen to be, hop on a plane and have lunch in Los Angeles, hop on another plane and eat supper in Hawaii, all in the course of one day. We can travel to and fro pretty easily. Think about knowledge. The traveling is connected with knowledge and, and technology. Has it multiplied? You betcha. You know, my grandma, she passed away just a couple of years ago. And I think about all the changes she saw in her lifetime. She was close to 100 years old when she died. In her lifetime, she literally saw the world change. Let me give you just a few of the things that she saw in her lifetime. She saw the development of indoor plumbing with hot and cold running water. She saw the invention of the radio and people being able to buy them and have them in their homes, and it blew their mind. She saw the introduction of the telephone in people's homes, mass production of automobiles, the invention of the TV, movies, stereo phonograph records, eight-track tapes, cassettes, video cassettes, CDs, DVDs, MP3, surround sound, nuclear energy, nuclear bombs, fluorescent light bulbs, vitamins, disposable diapers, underarm deodorant, aerosols, roll-ons, plastic wrap, refrigerators, freezers contact lenses, automatic weapons. She saw the advent of the airline industry, the development of the interstate highway system, computers, contact lenses, <laughs> Pong, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Atari, Nintendo, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox, and Xbox 360. Chemical weapons, biological weapons, video cameras, microwaves, satellites, satellite TV, CBs, cellular phones, GPS, rockets, space shuttles, space stations, and the list could go on and on and on. That was all in her lifetime, the lifetime of one individual. Think about it. From the beginning all the way up until 100 years ago, things didn't change a whole lot. But in the last 100 years, people have literally begun to travel to and fro. And knowledge, technology has radically increased. It has multiplied exponentially. And really, I believe that the increase of technology is super significant when it comes to understanding Bible prophecy. I want you to notice something again in verse 4 of Daniel 12. And thou, O Daniel, hide the things and seal the book till the time of the end. Again, what does he mean by seal the book until the time of the end? Look down at verse 8. Verse 8. Daniel 12, verse 8. And I have heard, and I do not understand, and I say, Oh, my Lord, what is the latter end of these? In other words, Daniel is saying, I want to know what all this means. All these things that you've shown me, all these visions, I want to understand it. But look what he's told in verse 9. And he saith, Go, Daniel, for hidden and sealed are the things till the time of the end. This messenger from God was telling Daniel, This is not going to make sense to you, and it's not going to make complete sense to anyone until the time of of the end. Now, again, we've seen in earlier studies that most of what was prophesied in this book of Daniel has already been fulfilled. So it's easy for us to look back and say, okay, I get it. That makes sense. But on the other side, before the fulfillment of particular things, it wasn't going to make a lot of sense. In the same way, there are other Bible prophecies that 
haven't made sense for a whole lot of people through the centuries that are beginning to make more sense. There's a lot of things, for instance, in the book of Revelation and other prophecies that even a hundred years ago, scholars would look at and say, I know it says this, but it can't mean this because this is an impossibility. There's no way this could happen. This must be an allegory or some sort of illustration, but it can't be something that we would take literally. There's a time when many would have said, yeah, it looks like the Bible is alluding to, for instance, Israel being established as a nation, the Jews moving back into Jerusalem from around the globe, but that can't literally happen. But what happened? It happened. The Apostle John, when he had the vision that we call the book of Revelation or the unveiling, when Christ showed him those things that will take place, I don't think he understood a lot of what he uh, saw and what he wrote in that book. Think about a first century person getting a glimpse at the world today or the world in the future. Think about a person from the first century getting a vision of a predator drone or an Apache attack helicopter or whatever. He wouldn't have even known it was a machine. It would have made no sense to him. And if he tried to write about it, what would he say? Hmm, maybe something like what the book of Revelation describes. In the same way, people would read the book of Revelation centuries after the time of John, and they'd look at it and say, I don't know what this is talking about. This can't really be talking about what it's talking about, can it? It doesn't make any sense. But as time has gone by, things that were sealed, things that were cloudy have become a little bit more clear. It seems that things are being opened up as time goes on and we can look inside and get better glimpses, seeing things that had not been seen before. And you know what's interesting? That's the way God works. God conceals things. Paul the Apostle talks about it. He talked about the fact that Christ revealed secrets to Paul, things about God's ultimate plans that were not revealed anywhere else in the scriptures, that were not given to the prophets of old, but were given specifically by Christ to Paul to share with the Gentiles. God doesn't give everyone all the info all at once. But as time goes on, more of what God has given us makes sense. I hope I'm making sense. But again, with the unveiling, with the book of Revelation, a couple things we touched on in earlier studies that I'll remind you of. In Revelation chapter 11, there's an event predicted that so many would say that's impossible. It could never happen. It talks about two witnesses during the Great Tribulation uh, being raised up by God to prophesy in Jerusalem. And the Antichrist, the beast, has them killed, leaves them in the street for three and a half days while the whole world watches. Man, the idea of something happening in one location on the earth while the rest of the world is able to watch it, that used to be an impossibility not that long ago. You would have read that passage and said, well, no way, this cannot be a literal future event. It's got to simply be allegorical. It's got to represent something else. But what about today? Man, all of the major news networks make it possible. Anywhere in the world today, you can watch in real time or very close to real time an event taking place on the other side of the world. You could even be in the most remote jungle. But if you have a satellite phone and a laptop computer, which you could charge with a little solar recharger, you could get on the Internet, go to a news website and see pictures or even a live video feed of events on the other side of the planet as they take place. What was impossible just a few years ago is now possible, and it's described in the book of Revelation. If you are my age or older, you probably still have your mind blown by new technology, don't you? I, my mind is constantly blown by the things that, that we're able to do with technology. People that are younger than me, people in their 20s and 30s, they're not as blown away by it. You know why? Because they don't even know what a record player is. They never experienced pushing the button on an eight-track player and switching between the four choices. They've had all of these. They've grown up seeing all of these amazing technological things. On the other hand, my grandma, who lived almost 100 years, she talked about how they used to gather around at night and stare at the radio as they listened to the one program on the one station 
that they could pick up. She remembers the days when you would write a note to someone and it would take two weeks to get to them. Now we text one another, we email, we send video messages. We even do live video conversations with Skype or FaceTime. A lot of people that are younger than me can't fathom what I grew up with, the incredible difficulty and hardship of only having three channels on the TV and actually having to get up and walk across the room to change channels or to adjust the volume or to turn the TV on or off. There was no such thing as a remote control. Well, you know what there was? I was the remote control in my house. I still remember the first time I saw a remote control. We had gone to visit some relatives in Texas, and I was probably, I don't know, eight, nine, maybe 10 years old, saw the remote control, and it freaked me out. I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Now, no one's amazed by a remote control. Anyway, another interesting thing. In our study of the book of Daniel, we looked at some prophecies about the coming Antichrist. And I pointed out to you that the book of Revelation talks about one particular thing that the Antichrist will do that critics used to laugh at and scoff at. People could believe that it could be anything other than an allegory for something else because it was an impossibility. But now it's not. Remember Revelation chapter 13, verse 16? Let me read it to you. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark. Again, people used to read that and go, how in the world could something placed on someone's hand or forehead allow them to buy and sell things? How could you use something on the back of your hand to track purchases or to identify a person? How could anything like that be managed or regulated or controlled? What about today? It would be hard to imagine someone not imagining it being possible. You know why? Because the technology is here. The computer systems are in place. The technology that you and I use to pay at the gas pump, along with a simple scanner and a microchip, is all that's really needed. And that technology has been in place for quite a while. Let me read you an article from 2003. This is from November 21st of 2003, a little over nine years ago. The headline is this, biochip the headline is this, Biochip Implant Arrives for Cashless Transactions. Announcements at Global Security Confab unveils syringe injectable ID microchip. Now let me read the article. Quote, at a global security conference held today in Paris, an American company announced a new syringe injectable microchip implant for humans designed to be used as a fraud-proof payment method for cash and credit card transactions. The chip implant is being presented as an advance over credit cards and smart cards, which, absent biometrics and appropriate safeguard technologies, are subject to theft, resulting in identity fraud. Identity fraud costs the banking and financial industry some $48 billion a year and consumers $5 billion, according to 2002 Federal Trade Commission estimates. Blah, blah, blah. The article goes on and on and on, talking about this company and the RFID chips. And again, this is from nine years ago. And they go on, they talk about a cashless society and all of these amazing things. Now people are really excited about it because it makes sense. But my point is this, my friend, this article was written almost a decade ago. What was impossible is now more than possible. What used to be looked at as being totally allegorical in the Bible, as far as prophecy goes, it needs to be looked at today as literal. What once was sealed and made no sense is being unsealed and making a lot of sense. And all of these things could be a real indicator that the fulfillment of the prophecy left in the book of Daniel could be right around the corner. We do not know the day or the hour, but we might be able to get an idea of the season. What do you think? Daniel chapter 12, verse 5. And I have looked, I, Daniel, and lo, two others are standing, one here at the edge of the flood and one there at the edge of the flood. And he saith to the one clothed in linen, who is upon the waters of the flood, till when is the end of these wonders? And I hear the one clothed in linen, who is upon the waters of the flood, and he doth lift up his right hand and his left unto the heavens and sweareth by him who is living to the age that after a time times and a half, 
and at the completion of the scattering of the power of the holy people, finished are all these. Now, there's a few things I don't get in there, but I do understand this, that when it mentions the holy people, it's talking about Israel. And during the great tribulation, they will face some rough stuff that will last, according to verse 7, a time, times, and a half. That's three and a half years. Now, in an earlier study, we saw a prophecy about the coming world leader, the Antichrist, bringing some sort of a treaty into place, a seven-year agreement in the Middle East to bring peace to the Middle East, peace to Israel, but we saw it would only last three and a half years. Now, if you missed those earlier studies, give them a listen, and you'll find out what the Antichrist will do three and a half years into what we call the Great Tribulation period. It's going to be some bad news for the Jews, I'll tell you that. Verse 8, and I have heard and I do not understand. Pause right there. Here's Daniel's response to this messenger from God. I have heard, but I do not understand. And maybe you say the same things. Maybe you say, I read this, and James, I hear you, but I do not understand. Well, let me tell you, my friend, there is a whole lot I do not understand either, which is why I'm constantly studying, because I want to know. I want to find out more. I'm kind of driven to want to find out more. But here's what's interesting. As I look back at my life and my whole life long, I've been looking and searching and studying, it seems. There's been a lot of times where I thought I understood something, but then later I realized I hadn't understood it at all. That's part of the growing up process. And you can probably look back over your own life as well and see particular areas where you thought you had it all figured out, including things having to do with the Bible that you eventually realize, you know what? I didn't understand that at all. I wasn't getting the whole picture. And, and my friend, that's okay. When it comes to Bible prophecy, especially, there is a lot we are not going to understand until it's right there. And then it'll be unsealed. Then we'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly. Verse eight again, and I have heard and I do not understand. And I say, oh my Lord, what is the latter end of these? And he saith, go, Daniel. For hidden and sealed are the things till the time of the end. Purify themselves, yea, make themselves white, yea, refined are many, and the wicked have done wickedly, and none of the wicked understand, and those acting wisely do understand. In other words, there's going to be some who understand more than others understand. None of us have it all figured out. Paul talks about that. If anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing yet, as it could be known. There's always more to know. Verse 11, and from the time of the turning aside of the perpetual sacrifice, and to the giving out of the desolating abomination are days, a thousand two hundred and ninety. Now, during the tribulation period, the Antichrist will stop the sacrifices in the new temple, which we talked about in earlier studies, and set himself up to be worshipped, which we also talked about in earlier studies. And we're told here it will be twelve hundred and ninety days before that time of trouble is wrapped up, and it's going to wrap up, I believe, according to other passages, when Jesus Christ physically returns at the end of what theologians call the Battle of Armageddon. 1,290 days. Now, you might say, wait a minute. I thought nobody knows the day or the hour. Well, that's right. We don't. When it comes to Christ returning for the body of Christ, the believers, his church, when it comes to the snatching away, what some people call the rapture. No one knows. It's going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I believe it could happen today. People would argue with me about that, but I believe it could happen at any point in time. I don't think there's anything else that has to happen prophetically before the snatching away. However, if you're one of those that are not taken in the snatching of the way, and you were here at that midpoint of the Great Tribulation, it looks like if you were aware of the day the Antichrist enters into the temple and declares that he should be worshipped and stops the sacrifices, you would know the day. You would know that from that day the Antichrist went in, there would be 1,290 days before this age all wraps up. Verse 12. Oh, the blessedness of him who is waiting earnestly and doth come to the days 1,335. Hmm. So now we have another number of days, 1,335, which is 45 days longer than the 1,290 days in verse 11. 
And I don't know what this is talking about. Different Bible scholars have ideas about these 45 days. I don't have a clue. But one day, it will all be unsealed and it will all make more sense. But I definitely wouldn't jump on the I've got it all figured out bandwagon with, with that. But here's something I want you to see that you can grab a hold of. Verse 13. And thou go to the end. Then thou dost rest and dost stand in thy lot at the end of the days. It's as if God is saying to Daniel, Dan, don't worry about all of these things right now. Don't get sidetracked by what you don't know. Don't get sidetracked by what you don't understand. Right now, live out what you do understand. Just keep going. Keep moving forward with what you know. Go to the end. Then thou dost rest. I like that. Go to the end. At this point, Daniel was probably in his 90s. And this messenger from God is saying, Daniel, you may be in your 90s, but keep on going. Keep moving forward until the end. Stay focused until the end. Serve the Lord until the end. Don't worry about the things that God has not revealed to you. In his good timing, he will show you all you need to know. For now, just keep moving forward. And that brings us to the end of our study in the book of Daniel. My name is James Flanders. Thank you so much for listening. Be blessed, my friend. Be blessed.